Hello procrastinators and welcome back to me, really, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I um, went away for a holiday for a week, for the first time since I started YouTubing, which was so nice to do. I'm all refreshed and back and um, I don't feel a bit dead anymore, which is good. My arm has grown back, that's always a good thing. So yeah, I'm ready to, you know, get some gaming stuff done. Um, as I said, I am back from holiday. I'm just back from holiday. So welcome to the I've just got off of a plane and don't have enough time to make a regular video today special. Yes, this one isn't going to be big on visuals, methinks. <laughs> Snail. But anyway, uh, people have been, in my absence, reviewing the latest generation of games consoles, the Xbox One and the PS4, um, for reasons I can't comprehend at all. Why Why would you review them now? Because every fucking review ended with, oh, but there's not a lot of games out for it yet. Of course there's not a lot of games out for it yet. It's just come out. So yeah, uh, I've decided to review the last generation of consoles because that's sort of done. I think it's a good idea to review stuff, you know, when it's finished and done. I mean, it'll drag on for another few years like the last fucking Harry Potter film. But um, yeah, it's it's... Done, pretty much. It's done, right? There's no one's gonna be making huge, giant budget games for anymore. It's sort of like I do. You'll get the. There'll be the shit versions now. Like they got the sort of the next gen versions and the shit versions. So it's a good time to look at it, review it, and rank the consoles from the best that we had to the to the Wii. And uh, after that small spoiler, uh, I think it's time to start at the bottom. Advice for life number five. The Wii. Yeah, so, the Wii. Uh, oh, where do I begin with the Wii? It, it seemed to be an experiment. An experiment to see just how many middle-aged women you can get playing video games. And I'm totally okay with more people playing video games. That's fantastic. I want everyone playing video games, regardless of shape, sex, race, creed, whether you prefer Doritos or Pringles. Every I want everyone playing video games. That's fantastic. But, unfortunately, I I'm, I'm not... I'm not a middle-aged woman. I'm just, I'm just not. I've never been one. So, um, didn't really appeal to me a lot. I mean, it's sort of, it, I fucking appealed to everyone else. Jesus, this thing sold more copies than buttered heroin, whatever that was. But it's sort of, it's appeal was twofold. They had sort of like the Wii shuffleboard, whatever it was called, that you stood on and did exercises on, which can take a flying fuck away from me, thank you very much. And then there was sort of like the motion controls, which is fucking genius. Not for a gaming concept, but if you've ever seen your mum play games, a racing game, she will use the controller like a steering wheel. Even if that's not how you play the game, that fucking's gonna spin. Just wee wee. That's just how they control it. So Nintendo built a console that did that. Well done. Well done for you, but motion controls are fantastically imprecise, as you prove with every fucking game on that system. Uh, and unfortunately, Nintendo still believe that a square is a comfortable shape to fit in the hand. No! Have you seen everybody, everybody else's things look like futuristic boomerangs? In fact, in Sony PlayStation 3, they actually genuinely did build a boomerang control. That was beautiful. But, um, they, that's comfy, because that's how my hands fit. Just not a fucking rectangle. That's just, and then with a wire and a fucking stick thing. What the shit's going on there? So, the Wii sits at the very bottom of my list uh, of the, uh, what was it, seventh generation of consoles? Thanks, Wikipedia. In fourth place, the PSP. Oh, I'm doing handhelds with this as well, because they're a big part of it, and I do do a lot of handheld gaming. So, I'm including handhelds, because I do quite like handhelds. Uh, the PSP... It was quite hard to place in this list. Like, I knew the Wii was going to be last, because I can't stand it, but the rest of the middle three, I sort of had a lot of ums and ums about where they were going to go, and I had to put the PSP last, but only really because the rest of it was... The other things were just a bit better. But I don't really... I really did quite like the PSP, but actually, let's talk about the thing the PSP did wrong first. The PSP went, we can do console games, and made a lot of games that were not quite console games. And... Console games are designed for you to sit in front of the TV for a long period of time and play and enjoy the story and stuff. That's not what a handheld should be for. A handheld should be for things you can pick up and put down and sort of those smaller chunk sort of game things. So it should be that sort of size. And the PSP didn't really do that very much. I mean, it did a few things like that. So you had stuff like um, uh, Loco Roco, Pat Pon Lumines. I, I do adore. Or is it Lumines? I never remember how to pronounce it. It's games that I really do quite like. Uh, and when it, it, sometimes it nailed the console thing, like, really well. Like, Peace Walker, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, is one of my favourite Metal Gears. It's huge. It's colossal. You can play it forever. Um, but it's, it's, it's just 
a little awkward on the controls, and it's a bit too long. The missions are a bit too long. Uh, and then there's stuff like Vice City Stories, which is just the most pick-up and put-downable thing. You just pick it up, kill some people with a taxi, and then go to bed or whatever. But um, so, that, so the PSP did have some good stuff in there, but it did focus a bit too much on the... Just a bit too much on trying to be a console when it wasn't. It was just a little nifty handheld. In the third place, the Xbox 360. Now, um... A lot of the time, like, I, as I was looking through the rankings of this, I've sort of ranked this by amount of exclusives that I liked. Which is sort of fine, because that's really why I would buy a console at the end of the day. Because if it's like, if something comes out on everything, I'll just buy it on PC. Because then I'd get the, the better experience sort of thing. But, um, the 360 was, uh... I got it really late. Like, the, um, the I did a Halo 4 unboxing thing. That was my 360, so I've really got into, like, the game... But I kind of want to get it, because when it comes to the end of a console run, I like to pick everything up and then play the games that I missed. But there really is not much about the 360. What I use my 360 for? It's sort of like a PS2 era emulator. Like, I play Burnout 3 and Black and stuff on there. That's what I really use it for. And that's sort of what it's become. It's just my sort of old PS... Uh, my old PS2. Which is sort of fine. Um, but the reason I'm putting the 360 higher than the PSP is the 360's controller. The 360's controller is the best controller ever. I haven't actually tried the PS4 or the Xbox One's controller, so they have improved them possibly, so I might have a new one there. But at the moment, 360 is my controller of choice. Like, so I was, I was, uh, I had a PlayStation 3 for absolutely ages, and when I got the 360, I was like, why is it that bloody DualShock this comfortable and this nice with these lovely triggers? D-pad is shit, but, uh, it's, it's a very, very nice controller. I'm actually ranking this higher than the PSP just because... Uh, it's got the nicer controller, and I do use that controller a lot on my, uh, my PC as well. So, yeah, uh, apart from the controller, exclusives-wise, ah, there's not much. I mean, there's, there's quite a lot, and I know, again, 360 nerds will be like, well, I, but most of the stuff came to PC, like Fable, which is one of my, like, favourite RPGs ever. I adore Fable. I know most of you going, well, I don't like RPGs. Fable isn't really an RPG, so that's why I like it. Um, it's British comedy mixed with not really an RPG. It's a perfect game for me. Um, but the other stuff is sort of like, if you, I mean, if you take all of the exclusives and go, okay, take away the things that the shooters said in the near future, you'd have no games. So, that's sort of like, um, it's just all the same bland, sort of tasteless crap. So, yeah, the Xbox 360 gets third place. Second place! Now, what will be my second place? Ooh, drum roll, please! <laughs> The PS3! Yes, the PlayStation 3 is my uh, second place choice. Um, because the PlayStation 3... I've had it for absolutely ages. Uh, I, I've generally stuck with the PS3 for my console choice for the sort of console exclusives. Uh, for, like Red Dead Redemption and stuff. But for its general exclusives, like for the PS3 exclusives, it blows everything out of the water by such a huge way. And basically it's two companies that do that. Naughty Dog with uh, Uncharted series and The Last of Us, and that game company with Flower and Journey. And so, just in those two things, you've just got such, so much more depth than it's like any of the boring brown Halos or Gears or whatever sort of brought to the table. It's, it's just, you get a lot more variety on the PS3, which is really why I, I put it higher. The controller's not as good. I do prefer the XMB to sort of the, uh, the Microsoft's window thing. Uh, I don't prefer the new PlayStation Store because it takes a million years to load and is awful. Um, but yeah, it's sort of, it's just, it's a lot more fun. I, I get a lot more fun out of the PS3. So you've got stuff like Little Big Planet. you got all the weird PSN games, The Unfinished Swan, uh, Trash Can Panic. Tra I always call it Trash Can Panic. It's just Trash Panic. That always bugs me. Uh, what was the other? They have Tokyo Jungle I really want to play with the animals and after the humans have gone or something. I have no idea. But they have pain. They just have these really weird interesting games and I like weird interesting games so that's why uh, I'm putting the PS3 up a little higher. Also it doesn't use batteries in its controllers which is a giant motherfucking tick. So number one, da -da 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 -da. you know what's going next? Uh, the DS. The Nintendo DS. Yep, Nintendo did the best and worst thing of the last generation. Uh, the Nintendo DS is... It's it quite possibly my second favourite ever console after the PS2. It is just weird. Everything that came out for it was weird because it was so underpowered. People had to generate, like, the big companies had to generally get sort of, like, indie things. Because, like, when you ha don't have a lot of processing power and a lot of people making things, you go into the weird indie stuff, which is what I really sort of like. And the DS was basically just a console for that. Like, now that the 3DS has got a lot of power, everything's really dull. I don't really like the 3DS at all. 
But the DS had just so many things that were just brilliant on it. Just brilliant stuff. I mean, you had P-Cross, which I just played, and P-Cross 3D and stuff that I've just played forever. Um, Advanced Wars, Phoenix Wright, Professor Layton, the Castlevania games are on there, Chinatown Wars, the GTA game, uh, WarioWare Touch, which I played a shit ton of. Um, what else do we have on there? The World Ends With You, the only JRPG I have ever enjoyed. Though if you've never played it, you need to play The World Ends With You. It is messy and brilliant and fantastic. I absolutely love it. And it's got that sort of, the collection, sort of, you have to collect these things that have different moves and general use of collecting the things. So it's not like Pokemon where you hoard them and only use your standard six. You generally use most of the things you get. It's a brilliant system. Uh, Elite Beat Agents, one of my favourite games of all time. Which would only ever work on the DS. Like, only ever work. I mean, like, who's, is it PlayStation that they're currently doing that? Oh, only on PlayStation sort of thing. But bollocks, that everything can be run on that sort of thing. You generally, the DS was one of those very rare sort of experiences. There was stuff that just, just really clicked with me. I think the DS was just super, I still play my DS. My 3DS can fuck up, but my DS, my little blue light DS just sits there. And every now and then I put it up, I'm like, ah, let's play something on this. I even have, like, a whole bunch of Japanese games that I would play on it, because it was region-free. And it played Game Boy Advance games, where it was backwards compatible, you shoved them in the bottom, so I had, like, just old uh, Game Boy Advance games that I loved on there. It was it was an almost perfect system. I adored it. I think it was absolutely superb. Um, and it's number one. I think it was the best thing of the last generation. Uh, it's great, because all the Nintendo fanboys have pissed off since the start. But uh, so they will never know that I think that the, the DS was the best thing. The best thing of the last generation. So yeah, tomorrow videos will return to normal. On Wednesday they'll get weird again, and by Thursday they'll probably be fine. So, uh, yeah, uh, if you want my predictions for the current generation of gaming, I predict that the Vita will be my favourite console, uh, because of its stupid weird indie scene that is getting a lot of steam, and I'm really quite enjoying that. Uh, but, uh, we don't know what the PS4 and the Xbox One are gonna do. Apart from shit themselves if they try and run 1080p. Well, hey, right, I'm off, thanks for watching Procrastinators, and to run. Enter the domain of the nerd cube. Videos dropping from above like birds.